Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In today's video we'll be taking a look at some ATI AGP cards from the Windows XP era and how they stack up against each other. And at the end of the video we'll have a conclusion on uh, which card is the best from these uh, to use in a Windows XP gaming computer. First we'll have a look at the test system that we're using for these benchmarks, then we'll have a look at the video cards themselves, then we'll perform the benchmarks and then we'll have our conclusion. Taking a look at our test system, our specifications are as follows. We have an AMD Athlon 64, overclocked at 2.53 GHz. This is a 3700 plus. We have two gigabytes of DDR400 memory. The motherboard is an ASUS K8VMX motherboard. We use a 160 gigabyte IDE hard drive from Mac Store. And the operating system is Windows XP Pro Service Pack 3. The cards used are the Radeon 9000, 9700, 1650, 2400 Pro, 2600 XT and 3650. The drivers used for these different cards are the Catalyst 6.11 for the 9000 Pro, Catalyst 8.12 for the 9000 X series, and the Catalyst 11.7 HP Hotfix driver for the HD series. To keep everything simple, all benchmarks have been performed at 1024 by 768 resolution, a very common resolution for the Windows XP era. The first card we'll be benchmarking is an HIS Radeon 9000 Pro. This card features 128 megabytes of standard DDR memory and a 128-bit memory bus. It uses the AGP 4X interface. Next up is the newer Club 3D Radeon 9700 Pro. This card features 128MB of standard DDR memory with a 256-bit memory bus. This card uses the AGP 4X interface as well. Next up is the two years newer Radeon X1650. This card has 256MB of DDR2 memory and 128-bit memory bus. This card uses the AGP 8X interface. We're now entering HD territory with the Radeon HD 2400 Pro, featuring 256 megabytes of DDR2 with a 64-bit memory bus and the HP 8X interface using a PCIe bridge chip. The next card in our lineup is the HD 2600 XT from HIS again. This card features 512 megabytes of GDDR3 with a 128-bit memory bus and HP 8X interface. Also PCIe bridge chip equipped. And last but not least, the Radeon HD 3650 by Club 3D. This card features 512 megabytes of DDR2 with 128-bit memory bus, HP 8X interface and PCIe bridge chip as well. Let's get to the benchmarks now, starting with 3 Mark 2001 SE, a very standard DirectX 8 benchmark. And uh, let's take a look at the results. In 3 Mark 2001 SE, the HD 2600 XT is the fastest card by far followed by the X1650 and 9700 Pro and HD 3650. The slowest cards are the Memory Bandwidth Limited, HD 2400 Pro and Radeon 9000 Pro. Let's take a look at 3D Mark 2005, a DirectX 9C benchmark. What we see here is that the Radeon 9000 Pro and X1650, as well as the 2600 XT, could not complete the benchmark due to uh, insufficient feature support, or simply because they crashed and couldn't make it th through the entire benchmark suite. What we can also see is that the 9700 Pro, albeit running Shader Model 2.0 instead, scored almost identically to the HD2400 Pro. The Radeon HD 3650 was almost twice as fast as these cards. And now we're entering the gaming benchmark, starting with the oldest gamer in our test suite, Unreal Tournament Game of the Year Edition from 1999. What we can see here is that we are mostly CPU limited, running around 200 FPS on all cards. There's really not much difference between them at all, with the 9700 Pro winning by a small margin, closely followed by the X1650, HD2600 and Radeon HD3650. The 9000 Pro and HD 2400 Pro were very close once again. Our next game in our test suite, Quake 3 Arena from 1999, offers a little bit more CPU scaling as observed in these benchmark results. What we see is that the Radeon 9700 Pro and X1650 are very close, with 275 and 277 FPS respectively. The 2600 XT and 3650 put up a good show, reaching almost 250 FPS, but the HD 2400 and Radeon 9000 Pro are just a little bit behind. Now we're moving to a newer and more demanding title, Unreal Tournament 2003. What we see in the flyby benchmark is that the 2600 XT pulls ahead of the other cards by a good margin, followed by the 3650, X1650 and 9700 Pro. Our slowest cards are once more the 2400 Pro and the 9000 Pro, with the 2400 Pro showing very poor scaling across all of these titles. The more demanding bot match benchmark shows a bit of a different result. 
the 9000 Pro is again the slowest card in here, but it's also the oldest. And the, and the 2400 Pro is also not really all that fast. However, it did redeem itself compared to the 2600 XT, 3650, X1650, and 9700 Pro, showing a bit of a uh, CPU limited scenario once again. Now UT is done, we're going to the more demanding and one of the best looking games from this era, Doom 3. Once again run 1024 by 768 at high settings. We see here that the artifacting Radeon 9000 Pro really couldn't handle this game at all, nor could the Radeon HD 2400 Pro scoring well below 30 FPS. The best experience is had on the Radeon X1650, 2600 XT or Radeon 3650. So what are the takeaways from all of these benchmarks? Well, the Radeon HD 2400 Pro and the 9000 Pro are a bit on the weak side for a Windows XP gaming computer, due to being a little bit limited or old. If you're looking for a good experience for the early XP games, when it like uh, UT99, 2003, Doom 3 is a bit uh, on the higher end side, uh, you're good with a Radeon 9700 Pro, X1650, 2600 XT or 3650, if you can find the coveted 3850 or 4670, those would be even better. But for the 1024 by 768 resolution, any of the mid-range ATI offerings on the HP bus are very good. Starting with the uh, Radeon 9600 XT, I would say. It's not tested here, but uh, it's a bit slower than the 9700 Pro. And uh, I guess that concludes this video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.